Hello everybody, this is TSS Killer from PocketMonsters.net and PPNStudio.com. The following footage was recorded at Pokecon 2015, which took place on January 9th through 11th, 2015 in Louisville, Kentucky. This panel is about Tom Whelan describing how he creates the Pokemon voices that you hear in the Pokemon anime. I would like to apologize in advance as I did not have a tripod during this recording and I overtake the audio in spots. That being said, enjoy the video. Guys, and I um, have directed the Pokemon animated series for, I don't know, eight years almost. It's been like eight seasons. And a season of Pokemon lasts a very long time. It's like 50 episodes. It's not like regular TV series, you know, that are 22 to 26 or things like Game of Thrones or Walking Dead that are like 13. I mean, this goes Take on and on and on. So, shut up, Team Rocket! <laughs> uh, <laughs> I consider every character you play to be subhuman. Except for the humans. Uh -huh. I consider them a little less than subhuman. Great. Um, how did you get involved in the Pokemon? How did I get involved? Um, so, uh, I started, about 15 years ago, I started working in cartoons and video games, anime, that kind of thing. Um, some people get pissed when you refer to anime as cartoons, uh, but, you know... My mother now it, knows it, it is. It's just yeah. the translation of the word. Now, the thing is, especially a show like Pokemon, Pokemon almost isn't really anime anymore. It's actually more considered just cartoons. Well, Pokemon has... The, the, the big reason is Pokemon has been produced for the world market for years. You know, originally it was produced for the Japanese market, and I don't think they, in their wildest dreams, had any idea that it would turn into what it did. But once it started to turn into that, they started to change the way that they made it to make it a little more international, make it a little more for everybody. Um, but I, um, I've i been acting most of my life, you know, and I went to college, I went, for, I went to NYU, and I have a degree in acting. And I was pursuing that, and you know, it was okay, except like, when you're in acting school, particularly at a place like NYU, a lot of the other acting students use it as like therapy, and I didn't care to hear the skeletons in their closet and all this. So I started to get sick. You didn't want of, to hear their soliloquies I while they not. hold the skull. You handle the dead Well, I, I just, I just <laughs> started to get tired of, of um, other actors, but I, I also, you know, I was playing music a lot, and by the time I was graduating, I was like, well, this is what I want to do. I'm going to go be a rock star, which is another wise career choice, too. In addition to being an actor. If that doesn't that... work, join Team Rocket. There you go. That's it... your probably, if you guys have a dental plan. <laughs> yeah. We right, do, actually. Off. There you yeah, go. So, you'd be surprised. So anyway, I, um, so I was, and I was lucky enough to have success playing music, and that's what I did for a couple of years after graduating college. And then, you know, you start to learn... You're, you're in the studio, so you start to learn some studio tech, things like that. So we got to a point where, you know, the band, we couldn't get along anymore. Um, so I had to get a job. Uh, so I ended up, um, somebody's alarm went off on this phone, by the way. I go by silence that. <laughs> that was mine. Well, actually, uh, uh, but hang on. Oh, are you going to answer how I got into this? Well, no, no, no. Oh, okay. Well, then let me answer, and then you okay. can talk after me. Um, so it's okay. Um, so, uh... I, I had to get a job, so I ended up finding an ad in the paper for uh, to be a producer, and it turned out to be for a company called Central Park Media. Yep. Central Park Media was an anime um, distributor in New York City, and at the time, you know, they were one of the more prominent ones, uh, but the, the whole face of the anime world was changing for a variety of reasons. And I was there for a little over four years, and it was really great. And I was producing stuff, I started directing stuff, and, you know, I'd always been acting, and I'd done a little bit of voiceover, um, but once I started working on that stuff, and I went freelance, founded my own company, so then they would send me work to produce and direct outside of there, <laughs> then it wasn't a conflict of interest for me anymore, so I could audition for all these other companies. And being that I had set up relationships with, like, every studio in town, I started getting a lot of auditions, and I started getting a lot of parts. And immediately, four kids swooped in and, and like snatched me up, and I started directing for them. Plus, then I was acting in all their shows. And I, my first involvement with Pokemon in any way was I—I I think I was in movies at seven and eight. I, I mean, it's a long time, and I played a lot of parts. 
So, yeah, movie eight was the Lucario one. Movie seven, I think, was the Deoxys. Deoxys, right? Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, Skywending Visitor. Uh, and I was directing other shows for them. And then, with the Pokemon Company, when their license agreement ended with four kids, and they decided to produce it on their own, um, everything changed. With the Fire Nation attack. And what's that? When the Fire Nation attacked, everything changed. The Fire Nation, yeah. <laughs> so, so everything changed, and then. Um, they went to a particular company to produce the, the English language version of their show, and they were having a lot of problems. So then, me and my buddies kind of worked our way in there and managed to get the contract to record the show, to, to be the, the production contract for the show. So, and that was for movie 10, season 11. And since then, I've directed every single episode in every movie. So we're, I'm like a quarter of the way into season 18 now. Um, on TV, we finished season 17, season 18, you will see some point, soonish. I don't know. I mean, that's up to Cartoon Network, so. I hope they go back to another old region. Yeah, I kind of well, season that. 18, I mean, if have you been watching it? Uh, actually, not. Mm -hmm. So uh, season 17 is was the first season of the XY arc, so yeah. they will be in Kalos for a while still. Um, so season 18 is just going on with that. Season 18, uh, you'll see, will focus... Uh, has, the, has, the, has the season title been finalized yet? I don't know. <laughs> you know, I gotta be honest with you, I don't know. Um, you weren't uh, in Orgies, correct? No, I didn't work on It was pretty good, though. Okay. I'll take your word for it. I've heard, I've heard multiple things about Origins. I mean, well, you, you know, right. I've seen what the animation looks like. I know the cast, and they're all very talented. Um, I also know they mispronounced some things, and there were things like that. Uh, I found it odd that they voiced the creatures when the creatures were being played more animal, making sounds rather than saying names. And I did uh, I did some promos, uh, one in particular for Black Two White Two, which had a very anime, yeah. very different style. It was fantastic, and that the creatures sounded like beasts, sounded like monsters, and we just left them that way, and it was really cool. Um, Origins is sort of in the middle. It yeah. wasn't that far out, which is what everybody thought it was going to be. Well, it was it's, a big tribute to the classic. It's, it's yeah. in the middle of that in the show. Um, you know, but ask uh, Kyle and uh, Lucian about that when they get here, because Lucian was blue, okay. and uh, well, Johnny, Kyle Johnny was, was Brock. Blue. Johnny's not here though. Yeah, I'm saying that's why. Ask Lucian well, and Kyle about it when they kiss the yeah, elbow. That's awesome. So, um, so anyway, so I've been doing everything Pokemon since then, and since then I started. Uh, you know, I've played a lot of Pokemon creatures. I've played eighty-five something. I don't know. I've played a lot of different creatures. I've played more creatures than anybody else, and that's something specifically that I was going to kind of get into talking about is like what it takes to make good creature sounds and and then I would like to maybe have some you guys try and create some sounds because there's a few Pokemon that you know we haven't seen in the show yet and I don't know what they're going to sound like and maybe it can help me out. So you have a question? Yeah, uh, which, one, which Pokemon voice was your favorite? That I played or, or my yes. favorite in general? Both. Both. Okay. The woman who plays Pikachu is a genius. She's fantastic. Okay. Yeah. And now, you know, we don't work with her in America. Oh, she does her thing in Japan, and they just don't change it. I mean, one of the reasons why they change, why they voice some Pokemon in English and don't voice others is what? What do you think? Translation, basically. That's right. It's the name. Yes. And it's also because there are some cases in the dub, as you know, where the Japanese voices actually stay in because you he you kind of hear the visual, the audio cues between Pikachu and the other Pokemon you no, can't over. That is not true. Okay, I would like a clarification of okay. that, please. That is maybe it was true over ten years ago. That is that is not true. It is what he said. It's it's about translations. It's about if the name changes from Japanese to English, it, the, the voice needs to change. Pikachu is always Pikachu. The yes. other thing is sometimes. The creature in Japanese just makes a sound. It doesn't say its name. Yes. A lot of times being like the legendary creatures mm -hmm. that just make this Godzilla Jurassic Park dinosaur noise. Yes. 
there's no need to change that because it's not saying a name. An, an example, uh, I watched uh, the black and white in a lot in Japanese and English. I I've watched all the episodes in uh, Japanese. Pokeboo, you know, was tepe, Pokeboo, yeah, yeah. And that's another good example because it's translated differently. Tepe. tepe but, yes. But I, I always like the Japanese name, and I wish they could have kept it, to be honest. But, but it's a pig in, yeah. in America. So it's just that name was just kind of cool. Tepe. Yeah. You don't like Tepe? <laughs> I thought I, when I got when I got the game, I actually named him the Japanese translation. Okay, and that's the great thing is you have the freedom to do that. Another so, thing is another thing is uh, the sorry. Example. Yeah. Another thing is when you did the Hall Lucha and the Lucha Bull. Um, I like how they that you actually kept the kind of vibe that that Lucha Bull had in the Japanese version. So I really have to say well, that's and that's part of the approach to it. And I don't play Hall Lucha. A guy named H.D. Quinn plays Halucha, and I picked him specifically. Um, he's a, on Sesame Street, and he does Muppet stuff. Yes. And um, he played a thing on a, some TV show, something for the Henson right. shop. Mm -hmm. And he played this thing called Professor L. Chupacabra, and it's this <laughs> Chupacabra thing. Uh -huh. And it's really funny, and he does this it's sort of this big Mexican thing, and I have the blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, that would, like, it's like I'm like, take that mm -hmm. and work it into this guy, because Paul Lucha is a luchador hawk. He's mm -hmm. this swaggery Mexican mask wrestler thing. And I love it. I think mm -hmm. he's so much fun. He's got a lot of personality, and that's something that very often when we do the Pokemon voices in English, you know, we are taking our cues mm -hmm. from the Japanese. We need to listen yes. to what they did and more often than not, you know, we try and honor that because the thing that people need to remember about this, and over the course of the history of the show, it has certainly evolved, and I think people, the, the, even the people who produce it, their understanding of the show is, has changed. It's not just a thing saying a name. They're characters, and mm. some of them are more character than others, like Halucha yes. is a character, definitely, you know. So what you're saying, sorry to interrupt, but what you're That's saying right. is that you're not just saying a name, you have to add a personality just by saying one word. Yeah, like, it's it's a yeah. weird acting exercise. Any of you guys ever go to acting school? I did a lot of it. I do, like, right now I'm minoring in acting. Do you ever use the Meisner technique? Yeah. Okay, so the that's what Meisner technique. technique is like. It's like repetition mm -hmm. until, like, the words that you're saying sort of lose their meaning. So it's like you need to be able to convey these intentions and emotions on any words, you know? Um, so it's... It's it's strange in that way that you you know, but oh, the interesting thing I've, it's okay. Um, Two hundred rupees. That, that, but but here's the other thing though that you have to remember. In a weird way, putting yourself in the world of Pokemon, Pikachu isn't a creature that says Pikachu. It's a thing that makes a noise that sounds like Pikachu. Yeah. You know. So mm -hmm. that's why, to me, the one of the other keys to good Pokemon sounds is to under-enunciate everything. The more you enunciate the hell out of every syllable, the more you sound like a person saying yeah. a name. And there are certain Pokemon names that make that easier, and some of them make it more difficult. Some of the names are very clunky and long, and some of them aren't. Sometimes you get really good vowel sounds to use. Open vowel sounds, ahs and os and things like that are great. Uh, short, like schwa vowel sounds, I's and U's, like short I's and, and short U's, are hard to deal with. One of the, the, the biggest examples of that is Piplup. Do you, do you guys know what Piplup is? Yeah, a little yes. penguin. Mm -hmm. yes. Piplup is so damn squeaky. Um, now, I wasn't, I didn't create that one, but Piplup started out as Pochama. Yeah, Pochama. And O and A are really good, big, open vowels that you can do a lot with, but I and U, uh, they're hard to hold those, you know? They don't ring out. And Piplup had so much personality in the voice they came up with, so high and squeaky, that it it makes it hard to differentiate your emotions, because you end up just being like, yay, I'm happy, yay, I'm sad, yay, I'm angry. You know, like everything comes out the same, you know? Um, Notice that it was a pretty hard role that I even try, like, imitating yeah. noises and stuff, and Piplup was a very hard it's one. It's a tough one. Well, that's also done by women, well, it's done by Michelle Hotz. Yeah. And Michelle did a really good job with it, because it's not the actor who necessarily it comes with the voice. It's always, you know, the directors and the producers, like the buck stops here. The actor may come up with the voice, but 
it's me who's going to be like, yes, that is right for this character, you know? So I don't fault her for any of that. And she has a really great range and is good with creatures. One of them, one that she does that is uh, that I always loved was Snivy, because mm. she gave Snivy a lot of personality. Snivy is one of the ones that was different when it was yeah. male and female, which I've tried to do a little more. It was funny that times. it was female in the series. Uh, Ash Snivy is female. That, mm -hmm. that was cool. Yeah, it? well, it's it's princessy kind of. Yeah. It's very snooty. Um, so. Making me high ish bar. I did that. All right. Japanese. So. Sometimes, though, I have to say, if you listen to listening to the Japanese every now and then, I might have a different idea for a voice, which I'll then be like, listen, I'm going to try something different with this, because sometimes what they're going for, it may not come across in English, or it's just the sounds are different. Um, this is a funny thing you learn when you work on international stuff. Animals say different words in different languages. Mm -hmm. um, there's a... a I don't know if anybody's watched Family Guy, but there's a Family Guy episode. See, the youngest kids in the room are like, yeah, Family Guy. Um, but where, uh, where, where uh, Stewie finds a European speak and say thing, and it's like, shazoo, the cow goes shazoo, things like that. And they're like, what the hell is this? You know, the, um, but like dogs don't say woof, they say like bum, and cats go nya instead of meow, you know. Yeah. That's so why you have Nyoth, right? Right. It's, it, so you end up with these sounds that are, they're trying to sound cat-like or dog-like or pig-like or whatever that creature is, but it doesn't necessarily come across that way in English because that's not the way we do that sound. Um, but sometimes, and, and this happens more and more with newer Pokemon, like, and these are the ones that drive me nuts. <laughs> like, when you have a Pokemon that's like, a lamp. <laughs> ice cream cone. Because I, 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 garbage can. But but then you got it. You got. But then see now you got to get creative because like yeah. what the hell does an ice cream cone sound like? You know. Now sometimes you can just go with what the Japanese are doing. But Slurpee maybe. What does it look like? Does it have a big tongue hanging out of its mouth? So that's why. That's why I like. Because I do a lot of improv, and I think that's perfect for like improv because it requires you to think like. Okay, if I was to personify this object yes how would I do that but and then there's... you know you got to put it also in in the Pokemon context too yeah. because if it's like like here hang on um because I, I yet again I like I think that all Pokemon have an interesting sort of way to it I'm not a gen one by the way so um, so like here well like look at, hang on oh. so like if you can see this from out there. Do you know what that is? No. Slurp up. Slurp up. Yeah. yeah. See, now you like talk about, see, see what Slurp up looks like? Slurp up is like, like a walking cupcake. Okay? Yeah. That came from cotton candy. It started out as the Swirlix, which is like a cotton candy puff. And it turns into this sort of cupcake pastry looking thing. But what does it look like? What, what, show me, tell me some features that you see here. Well, it's got a big tongue. Right, and it's a big tongue. And what is its name? Slurpuff. Slurpuff. Okay? So what do you think that might sound like? Slurpuff. Slurpee. Something yeah. sort of slurpy. And the other thing is, it's got the big tongue hanging out of its mouth. So what what you, you know, so what the girl who plays Slurpuff... Ty's talking with her tongue out of her mouth. So you end up with something like this. You hear that? It's except girl version, but you know. So you see that? And then the whole thing is. It's it's Charmander's me. Uh, it's uh under enunciated because if you were like as Slurpuff, you were like Slurpuff. No. And there are. Pokemon that sound like that. They're old school ones where I'm always like, you know. But again, it was we're all figuring it out back then. You listen to season one of The Simpsons and you're like, whoa, weird. But they were finding it. And and with the creatures, I think that that took longer with characters. I mean, you know, that's a little different because it's they're easier to interpret. They speak English, you know. Um, but the Slurpuff, so that, you know, 
But those are things that you have to take into account. What is the type of Pokemon? So like for the lamp ones, so there's Litwick, which is a candle. Yeah. Ghostfire. And then you have, was it Lampant? Lampant. And Chandelure. Chan yeah. Chandelure. Yeah. Why did they make those Pokemon? Were they really bored? No, okay, so wait. Like so wait. Now first thing I'm going to do is, what is the name of this show? Pokemon. How does Pokemon. Oh my god, there's Pokemon. 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 If you come in and work on the show, maybe you will someday. First thing we're going to do is I'm going to sit down there and you're going to be like, say the name of the show. You're going to go Pokemon, I'm going to go Pokemon. Yeah. You're going to go Pokemon, I'm going to go Pokemon. And we're going to do that for hours. Until, so it's called Pokemon. Pokemon. You guys can call it whatever you want, but it's called Pokemon. Um, they get all up my butt if, if somebody in the show slips and makes a mistake. They, 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 i got to tell you about this. The, the, the thing I try to explain to the producers sometimes, and they're like, that sounds a little like Pokemon to me. Do you know what a diphthong is? Yes. Hmm. What is it? It is a sound that is close to another sound. It's, well, it's a sound that is created by a combination of two sounds. A triphthong is a sound that's created by a combination of three sounds. So, Pokemon, the sound A, long, American long A, is made from E and E. A. And you get A. So, the long E sound is within the A sound. So, sometimes you're really, you know, on the fence there. Why did those, they create those? I don't know. Ask somebody in Japan. Like, it's, I don't know. You know, they, there are 719 of these things. That's got to be tough to, to not rehash stuff you've seen before and still come up things that are really cute and really marketable. Um, and I'm maybe that's, you know, I, I, they don't really have the look of, like, like, Japanese or, like, Chinese lanterns, but maybe that was part of the thought because those are things that are associated with ghost stories and death and things like that in, in Asia. But those are ghost types. So there, what would you do? I don't have a sample of chandelier or lamp. That seems like, I know what they more sound like, like a wispy well, or almost you? like a whale. So what would you do? Like, uh, so what, what's the name again? Lampant or chandelure? Chandelure. So you'd be like, chandelure. Like, like you're going off. You're almost like you're okay. a ghost. You're almost mm -hmm. whispering. If we go for it though, dude. It's like, chandelure. Now what if you were attacking? Chandelure. Like you go to more like a, a, a demonic, a demonic sort of like you're going to okay. like, oh. That's pretty good. And then you would, uh, then if you were like said, you'd be like, Chandelure. Like also, you're almost weakening and sort of mm -hmm. doing that. Okay. Something to go with it, like each Pokemon generation is usually focusing on a different continent. But even though it's, it's like the... Uh, this France, is France. France. Yeah. So I mean, you got I like, well, I would try to, you know, try a couple of things, you know, Chandelure. So I was going to... Because that sounds every French person sounds like. <laughs> you know, I mean, try to give it more French sway, you know, give it some yeah. French uh -huh. love or something. So, so one of the, one of the new um, creatures uh, that show, they, these guys show up in the... Um, most recent movie, movie number 17, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, which is the Deonce movie, or excuse me, Deonce movie, are the swords. Deonce. So you have Edge, Double Aid, and Aegislash. And these are ones that I played, and I it chose to make them different because in the Japanese version, it's kind of just like. Goldage. You know, yeah. it's like a dude sort of dopey saying a name. So what I did with him is every now and then also when we do this, we'll uh, put effects on him. It's so like Charizard, if you cannot tell, is pitched down. It is pitched lower than where it is performed. Um, and there's a bunch of ones like, like that, like Blaziken is pitched down. Uh, Snorlax is pitched way oh. down. Uh, where, like, you could play Snorlax and no one would know because the pitch shifter is doing all the work. Um, but with Hone Edge, I was trying to think, well, what what would you do for, like, a sword? What is a sword going to sound like? That's not, oh, you, like any you're, of you guys. Like, you're pulling out of a well, sheet, you know, like, you're slowly bringing that voice a little bit loud. Okay, that. that's an idea. Anybody else have an idea? I was thinking more, like, heroic sounding, like, almost like uh, Hone Edge or something more like... Like where you would sound okay. like a knight saying it or something what do you like say? that. Maybe sharp and clear. Sharp and clear. That's interesting. So what I did is I made it sound like a lightsaber. 
Um, because the other thing is because it floats and everything. Um, so I did a thing where I was sort of just like, oh, you know, like yeah. it's like a Doppler thing. And then you put a flanger on it and you get this. Good work. That's what it sounds like. And see, what's good about it is it doesn't sound like a person. And then Dublade, because there's two of them, it's a double voice thing. And that's Double A dying. <laughs> well, that's that's the other thing is when they're um. Do, what I did with Double A, it's a subtle thing that, that nobody will catch. But I'll tell all of you, and then you can yeah. pretend like you noticed. Uh, when Double A is happy, it's a major harmony, and when it is uh, Double A is sad, it's a dissonant harmony. So, Minor. There you go. And Aegis Slash. Aegis Slash is more like what they did with it in the Japanese, and I thought it was really cool. Uh, but then I just put the flanger on it, and it's... It's that thing. It's almost this weird motorcycle thing, because he rides it around, the guy who has it. He sort of hops on board like it's a flying Segway, and he, you know, zips around. Did any, did any of you guys see the most recent movie? Yep. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Good for you, and you. Here, Pikachu kid. Have a Pikachu. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, uh, Caitlin Glass was the, uh, she was the lead in that. She played Diancie. If you ever meet her at a convention, she's awesome. Um, so, uh, all right, so let me, let me show you guys something, and, and then maybe you can all help me out. Okay, so here's a, here's a Pokemon. And I'm sure you all know this one, I hope, but it's not Pikachu, but who's that little guy? Chespin. Chespin. That is, Harimaron. That is Chespin, that is correct. Now, Chespin, Chespin is the, um, is your, your grass type starter uh, in XY, even though starter is an unofficial term now. Um, I think it's always been an unofficial term. No? Oh, really? I used to say it in the show, now I know. Um, so, Chespin. Now, this, the Chespin that you see in the show, again, you have, like, there are, you know, Pikachus out there, and then there's Ash's Pikachu. And Ash's Pikachu, personality-wise, is going to be a little different. You know, they're all different, and that's the thing. It's because they're, they're characters. You have to treat them like these are things with brains and emotions and, you know. So, Chespin, you see him in the show? Yeah. What's yeah, he like? He's like, uh, he's sort of like Oshawa. Like, almost exactly like Oshawa. He's the jerk. <laughs> that is his role. It was Piplup. Now it's Oshawa. Now it's Chespin. Yeah. He's the, he's the jerk. He steals everybody's food. Steals he's a brat. And a he falls in love with all, like, the Pokemon girls and gets rejected. Yes. So, so uh, he, yeah. <laughs> See, this why proving once again why we don't need Brock. <laughs> Um, Brock is, he's in medical school, he's going to be a doctor, come on. Um, so, Ches Chespin then is kind of portrayed like a mischievous little boy, okay? That is, that's definitely how, and especially when you see when Chespin falls in love with certain Pokemon, the ones he falls in love with are particularly feminine looking. Um, so I think they're trying to portray him as a boy. So, Chespin sounds like this. Yeah, it is a little bit of a, a little boy thing, and sort like of almost funky like a, and fun. Kind of toddler. Yeah. So, Chespin eventually, okay, um, hang on. Play his shirt, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Chespin eventually turns into this crazy thing. Oh, what is that? Chestnut. 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 Chestnut is huge. He's like the Hulk, right? I mean, he's giant. Um, nothing he like is literally the Juggernaut. I actually heard, yeah, they actually got inspired from the Hulk for that character. It's really, okay. It's just something I've heard. Well, Chestnut sounded like this. Chestnut showed up in the most recent movie. Yeah. And then... Pretty much, that's it. No, Chestnut! You know, this kicking in doors and knocking stuff over and all this, you know. So, we start out as this sort of little boy, toddler kind of thing. We end up as this giant monster. In the middle, 
or this thing. Okay? What is that? Quilt like puberty. What? Okay. So, um, what do you think that would sound like? What did you say? Uh, like puberty. Like, the little guy just, you know, he's hitting his midpoint in his life. And, you know, it, it might sound a little dorky. His voice might, need, start, might still be growing. Something okay. Like that. So, let's listen to that, to, to Deadpool over here. That it's like, maybe it's like puberty or adolescence. Yeah. And a lot of the Pokemon, when they evolve, have... Some of them it's not as obscene, and this is an adult. I think one of the best ones is, is uh, uh, the new ones is Fennekin for that. Yeah. Because Fennekin is little and cute, and then the middle Fennekin is very, uh, which is breaks in, is very teenager-like, and then Del Fox comes across almost like a lady in a gown, although you can have male ones too, or then it's like a wizard in a robe or something, I don't know, because it is very wizardy. Oh, look at that, yeah. With her back, that's okay. You, you may operate the lights with your back all you want. Um, so, this one being the sort of adolescent form, he still looks a little silly, and he still looks like he's ready to have fun, okay? So, if we start it out, let me play that, the Chessman voice for you again. Alright, so if we're starting out here... Chessman! Chessman! What do we think the Kuladin sounds like? Sorry if I'm taking all the Just answers. raise your hand. Yeah, yeah you raised your hand. Um, I would almost feel like he would have like a, like almost a little bit of a breathing because you see he's a little rounder, he's a little larger. You know, he'd be adolescent. He'd have a little bit of a crack almost. Cause, Let me hear it. Uh, what's the name again? Quilladin? I would have to look that one up but okay. to give the official I don't wanna, I don't wanna, like, like, pronounce it wrong. You can say Quilladin or Quilladin, either one. It'd be like, Quilladin! Quilladin! Like, uh, you know, almost like he's trying to say it, but he's kind of like, Quilladin! Quilladin! Okay. Any like, ladies uh, want to give that one a shot? Yeah. I can't handle yeah. it. Quilladin! Come here. I don't have the mood. Let me hear it again. Quilladin! Okay, make him, try and make it sound a little tougher, maybe just a little... Go ahead. See, that would actually be a good I wanna, I'm point, like, to try to make him yeah, sound tough, but then you... Okay. Um, <laughs> Whoa. What? <laughs> go ahead, go for it. Sounds bad. No, it doesn't. Why did it? See, that's good. And the thing really is, you don't it. sound like a person, and that's what's important. You know? So good job. Here, have a blast twist. Right. Here, Elvis, on the end. That's that's a great bag, by the way. Here. Oh, thank you. All right. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Elvis. Um... Yeah, see, and that's that. Those are all the things you got to think about when you're doing this. It's all this weird little stuff that, that people don't always think about. And like I said, a lot of it is is triggered by how it looks. When you have something, as we talked about before, like with the swords and the ice cream cones and stuff, where you're just like, all right, whatever. But sometimes, you know, you get something and you and that you're like, oh, it's a goat. I know what a goat is, right? So what's a goat sound like? Everybody make goat noises. <laughs> Good. All right. See? Yeah, we're in Kentucky. You all know goats, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but so so this thing, what is it called? Go, go. Go, go. You're skidoo. all wrong. Skidoo. What? It's called, oh, it's skidoo. It's called skidoo. Skidoo. It's called, trust me, that caught me by surprise, too. Skidoo. Um, and we recorded yeah. the whole damn thing, and then it was like, what? Oh, oh crap. And I had to go back and make it skidoo instead of skiddo. Um, so skidoo... And it's just something I was telling this guy before. With pronunciations, I find it funny when people decide to get on the internet and like, about how Pokemon names are pronounced. And I'll do the same thing I did with you. What's your name? Cheyenne? No, it's Cheyenne. It's Cheyenne. No, no, no. It's Cheyenne. Okay? It's your name, but I'm telling you how to pronounce it. That's what that's like. Wow. I know when, because when, I'm when from the, Pokemon, the 90s. When the Pokemon company comes up with a name and people on the internet are like, you're saying it wrong, they made it up. They can pronounce it however they want, and you have to live with it. My favorite Pokemon name pronunciation story, um, one of my favorite Pokemon that I've ever played uh, was Arceus. Okay? I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> yeah, Arceus and... Um, uh, I'm from the 90s, and it's pronounced Arceus. Uh, I just said it, Sue. 
Man, I was saying yeah, I know. Thank you. So, Please point um, me out wrong. I, I need. But uh, and I'll tell you why. Now in Japanese, it's pronounced Arceus, but oh, I didn't even know that. You know, was, yeah, but uh, I was trying here, wait, hang on a second. So uh, that's why you don't always go by the Japanese. Hang on, just a minute. That's why you don't listen to trolls on the internet. And uh, maybe, maybe after, maybe after the panel, maybe you can go and uh, explain the Clement versus Clement thing. His name's Clement. His name is Clement. Clementic gear on. <laughs> so what? His name is Clement. He can say Clementic gear. It's so like. Listen to this. This is prepare for justice. Yeah! That's angry, Arceus. Okay. So. Arceus in the Japanese is pronounced Arceus, okay? But the English language version of the show, just so you know, goes to every English-speaking market on the planet. So it goes to Canada, it goes to Australia, mm -hmm. it goes to the UK. In the UK, what does arse mean? Oh, oh. God. It is your butt, yes. okay? So if you call him Arceus, it is like the American equivalent of calling him Asseus. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody will take that seriously. And everybody is supposed to take Arceus very seriously. So that one changed for that reason. And some mm -hmm. people are like, Brr. But usually when I tell them that, they're like, oh, okay. You know. So what are you going to do? But um, anyway. So we're speaking to the Pokemon god. The yeah, Pokemon. you sure are. You're uh, so we're talking to a butt, basically. <laughs> exactly. So um, so uh, what were we talking about? Oh, okay. So like the, the, the Skidoo, who sounds like the goat, okay? And you guys all make good goat noises. So... Who can make a goat sound using the word skidoo or the syllables of skidoo? Because remember, they don't always just say skidoo, they'll say do, they'll say skid, they'll say skid, they'll say kidoo, whatever. What? Skidoo. That's good. Hold on to the skid a little more. See? That's good. Now listen to what we actually did. Sounds like a baby lamb. It's a baby lamb. Yeah, well, that's what they sound like, you know? So, there you go. So, good, good, good job, dude. You get a charm enter for that. Ah, sorry. Um, so, yeah, so, I mean, uh, there's other ones like, you know, like Tepig we were talking about. I love Tepig. I was very upset when Tepig evolved. I mean, you yeah. gotta let go sometimes, but, that, you know, every now and then, you know, you pray that it's like, please let the be the super marketable one, that they won't evolve because they want to keep selling them, but, you know, um, that's, you know. There could be only be one. That's right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Pikachu's got that over everybody. Uh, but Look, like, he can't be one, unfortunately. <laughs> so, you see, there's little squealies in there. And that's something that when I, I like to do when you can. Because, again, it makes it sound more like an animal, less like a person. You can still give it a lot of personality, but... You know, he was just so cute. Now... This is interesting. There's a, a dude, his name is Mark Thompson. He does a lot of Pokemon voices for me. I love him very much because he can do that and then he can also do this. That's the same guy. What's up, dude? That's Mammal Swine. Mammal Swine is another one that's great because it's just so inhuman. It's so big and he's got that thing, you know. Um, Mark does, has played some of my other favorites uh, because he was able to really put personality in there. So does anybody remember this guy? Glyscore. Glyscore. Which is cool. Glyscore, well, Glyscore is funny. Glyscore was, you know, was a lot of personality and, and Mark really nailed that. Because some of them are big and scary, some of them are little and cute, and some of them are, you know, insane. And that's, Glyscore was that guy. Um, so let me, let me find another one and see what you guys can, uh, can bring to the table for me here. Um, okay. So, uh, alright. So, check this out. This is a, this is a weird evolution. What's this? Goomy. 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 What is Goomy? Uh, it's a dragon type. It is, it, it, I don't know if it's a hybrid type, but it is, it is considered and more referred to as a dragon type, and it's also being sort of the weakest dragon type there is. But 
what is it? Like physically, what is it? Like a slime or a... It's like a slug. It's like a blob, yeah. It's like, you know, I mean, probably like this big, and it's like a gelatinous, gooey blob. Some looks like jello. And it's little. Um, so what do you think that would sound like? Uh... Anybody raise your hand. Give it a shot. Yeah. I think it would sound like high, with like a little jittery voice. Do it. What? That's not bad. Um, can you make it um, more uh, like wet or like jiggly? Okay. That's not bad. So Gumi is uh, is one that I do, and it's a new one, and you'll see it soon. But it is sort of like that, except it's sort of I do this. Thing, so it's like, you know, you know, like that. The Richard Nixon impression could help right now. Yeah, so stuff like that helps weird, um, uh, it's a guy I work with a lot named Carter Cathcart. Carter plays James and Meowth, and he's played a bunch of, he was, uh, you know, Gary Oak back in the day. You know, Carter's an older guy, and Carter has a big droopy jowly face, <laughs> which comes in handy, because he'll get in the booth, and also, I don't know if you know, do you know who Tom Kenny is? Yes. Yeah. Who's Tom Kenny? Spongebob. Spongebob. Tom Kenny does this too. He'll laugh and he'll go, hey, 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 and he shakes his, like, his voice box. And not, not everybody needs to do that, but some people do that. And Carter, with his massive chubby child face, will get in there and be like, and just like crazy noises come out from that. So sometimes that happens, manipulating your parts. And also, like, um, so, this creature needs to find a picture. Uh, oh, I don't have a picture. Um, I have video, but I can't show you the video because it won't hook up. But, um, listen to this. Electros. That's Electros, okay? Electros is this eel thing, and its mouth is round, and sometimes its tongue hangs out. So, that's one when you're in the booth. That's a thing where I look at it, and I'm like, okay. It's like this. So everything I do, so they're like, E! E! Electro! You know, so you don't make a standard E, which is more of a smile. You have to make an E while trying to keep your mouth round. So it's like, E! E! Electro! And then you end up with a better thing. And also, as you can hear, that I'm under enunciating, that I'm not going to go, you know, Electros, you know, because that I think sounds stupid. Old school. It is old school, and I don't want to crap on all the old school stuff, but I think they were figuring it out, and and I prefer it to be more, you know, you know, so you don't hear it as much. Like, cause even like with Charmander, it used to be more like Charmander, and now it's more. You know, I do like Charmander. You know, you don't hit the R's as hard, and and you know. And uh, this guy, uh, Blastoise, is just, oh. and that's the other thing, some people think it's Blastoise, it's Blastoise, like the name Joyce. Um, and that one also, the pitch shifter helps out, so you can just kind of, you know, Blastoise! And then you put the pitch shifter on there and it sounds really, really big. Um, so, so I showed you the Gumi thing. So now, you guys, help me out a little bit. Gumi turns into the weirdest looking Pokemon there is, oh my God. which is this thing. Sligoo. Sligoo. Yeah. Right, and it's not Sligoo, it's Sligoo. You hit the first... Sligoo. 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 What, what, what? Sligoo. That's not bad. Do it again. Sligoo. Okay, I like it. You get a blast noise. <laughs> Alright. So, yeah. and then, now remember, that's your middle, and then Sligoo becomes what? Becomes this. Goudra. That Goudra. is Goudra. Goudra. That yeah, sounds too much like Sligoo. Yeah. <laughs> now here's the thing about oh, Goudra. Goudra. So let's give somebody else a shot. That's pretty good though. Goudra has slime like dripping off its chin. So it should be slobbery and wet. Somebody else want to try some? Anybody? Add a little stitch in it. Raw. Stitch. Um, is a popular uh, 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 go-to for a lot of people, which okay. is good, but you got to be careful that you're not yeah, sounding exactly. too much like Stitch. Um, but I'm th something. Anybody trying? Team Rocket. Uh, uh, let's see. Because I was thinking more like 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 you're a little lower. 
Alright, think more. You know, like, especially if you do it, somebody who drools a lot probably doesn't close their mouth as much as they should. So you can think of it if it's like, you know, like that. Maybe it'll be like that. And it's real cute, so that might be funny having that come out of its mouth. Um, Alright, that's pretty good. Here's one to me that why. This one sounds a little more like a person, but I can't help it just because how it looks. Um, all right, so we have this guy. Uh, who is that Pokemon? Who is that Pokemon? Who is that? Bunnelby. Bunnelby. That is Bunnelby, yes. Or Hornaby so, in Japanese. Bunnelby is another one that kind of has... No, it's not really cutesy. It's a little more of, like, tough little boy. You know? <laughs> Grungy. Uh, it's like this. Bunnelby. Did you hear it? Did you hear it? So, but what Bunnelby turns into <laughs> Digglesby uh, Diggersby or whatever Is this thing Is it Digglesby? It's Diggersby Diggersby okay. Now the reason being that the, the, the ears with the hands Turn into like these big backhoe diggers But if you look at him and this one, I, you know, I'm saying to him, I'm sure you can have female fingers beads, but it's like they give him the five o'clock shadow, and they give him a beer gut, and he's all, and he's all, what? yeah, he does. I mean, I've, they, this one's been in the show before, and um, what do you think that thing would sound like? Uh, very like a really crusty old thing. That's not bad. Like, very, just like... Okay. Now he's got the other thing is he's got the buck teeth if you want to go there. And, and he's got he, he does have a little bit of a dopey look. So the thing that immediately came to mind and my buddy Mark played him, he came out like this. And you can hear he's got this like thing going in the back of his throat because one of the things that Diggersby does that Bunnelby does too when you got to get wet in there I'm telling you and wipe everything down afterwards um, is he's got this uh, almost like kind of thing going on because one of the things Diggersby does and Bunnelby does is when he does dig he it's like he turns into a drill like Excadrill used to do that yeah you know, and that you could, you know, with Excadrill you could roll your R's. Mark Moisten too? No, I didn't use Excadrill. Okay. Because Excadrill was, yeah, it's got three, and, you know, it, um, it was, he was, he did a little bit, yeah. So listen, so listen how he's, he's got that gurgly thing, but then here you get this. Wait. A little bit, you know, a little bit, but that is sort of the, the when looking at him. I don't want to be around you when I'm sitting. I know, that's what, I, oh my, hey, Mark doesn't drink. Um, but that, um, that was, you know, sometimes it's, it's just such a dopey look that it's like, you know what, let's just go there. And it, it may be what they're doing with it in Japanese, because sometimes it's hard to tell, like, <clears throat> what... They probably say he'd be like from Okinawa. If that's the case, they say he'd be like from Okinawa. Oh, what the Kansai thing? Yes. See, now Kansai, it, that doesn't, it doesn't, you can't, you, you can't just immediately relate Kansai to like American Southern. Though. Yeah, it's I know more what of they a, do, though. you know, yeah. But it, yes, people do, but they should. Um, and that's another like accents in Pokemon is another weird zone <laughs> because like, you know, it's not Earth. It's Pokemon. You know, clearly, it, but, but clearly, like, you know, um, Kalos is based on France, and they even tell you that in the location, Lumio City is Paris, you know. Uh, Unova <coughs> was based on the United States. People say, oh, it's based on New York. No, the map is New York. The locations are the United States in general, you know. Um, what's that? The first four regions are the four main islands of Japan. Yeah. So, like, Sinnoh is like Hokkaido, and Kanto is Kanto, you know, so it, it, um, yeah, <laughs> but, you know, um, every now, now, if, for kids, they would often sometimes throw, um, random accents here and there, which is okay, it, to me, it's, you gotta be able to, if somebody asks, you gotta answer the question, why? 
you know, is there a reason? You don't always need a reason. You can just sort of do it sometimes. But, like, if this guy has an accent, well, why? You know, why does he not sound like all the other people who live in the same town as him? You know, um, certain times, like in Unova, one of the gym leaders is named Clay. Who's Clay? Anybody remember? Pikachu Kid. Who's, who's the gym leader, Clay? Uh, remember? You, from Unova? Yeah. What did he look like? He was like a drill guy, like he went mining. Clay was the one with the big cowboy oh, hat cowboy. and the giant belt buckle. Yeah. Oh. yeah. He wasn't a ham bone. Yeah, he's, he's, because that's what all Americans look like, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, for, and we're all blonde. Um, but he was, so like, that guy was meant to sound like a big Texas oil dude or something, you know. They wanted that. And, and, uh, but then there was a character they introduced named, uh, Fontina. And they wanted to pronounce her Fantina. And I'm like, Fontina. And they're like, yes, but fantasy. I'm like, the French word for fantasy isn't fantasy. You know? And the other thing is, look, Fontina sounds like a cheese. I'm like, well, you should have thought of that before you named her that. And then the compromise is she will call herself Fontina, and other people will mispronounce it Fantina. I'm like, well, fine. But because the other thing is, like, if she's French, she won't say eh, fan. You know, she won't say Fontina. And, and they gave her French words to say. And, like, uh, silent. And, and Burgundy and the other crazy uh, 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 connoisseurs would use French words. In Japanese, they would use French words. So Tasting time, all that stuff. France, French stuff, exists in the Pokemon world somehow. You know, like that was a language that was deemed okay, but then certain other ones aren't, you know? But, um, and I, I remember we did a, I did an Australian guy in an episode once, and it was a thing where, uh, now this one, I'd be very surprised if you have seen this, but it's a movie called The Road Warrior. You ever seen that? Yes. Uh, you yeah. have? Yeah. You have, okay. The Road Warrior is a movie, no, it's a movie that you wouldn't have seen. Yeah. Mad Max Road Warrior? Yeah, yes, it's yeah, a Mad Max movie coming out this summer, which is going to be freaking fantastic. Yes, but, it is. But The Road Warrior was the second Mad Max movie. It came out in 1981. It's, it's pretty much the movie that made Mel Gibson famous. I forget Vernon. And, um, well, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That... There's, there's a character who shows up in a Pokemon episode with like this sort of red purple mohawk and he's wearing sort of leather biker-ish gear and he's got the, the war paint on and he looks like this bad guy character from the Road Warrior. So we made him sound like that. So it's like Australian, but it's this thing! You know, where he's like, you can run, but you can't hide! I hate you know? that with and, and, and people, well that's, I'm not doing the accents, uh, that's what he sounds like though. He's like, you know, and people in Australia got pissed. Because they're like, you know, that's not what we all sound like. Ah, and I'm like, but that's what he sounded like. I'm like, be pissed at him. Vernon Wells for sounding like that or whatever his name is. Vernon Wells is a baseball player. Um, Vernon something. Uh, it's, it's Vernon Wells. It is Vernon Wells? Yeah. It's Vernon Wells. Yeah. Baseball player. Play for the Yankees and uh, Toronto. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so, you know, it is, it's weird with accents. Like, you got to be careful what you pick. Um, but... Yeah, so, just so, I, I, I want you guys to understand and hopefully appreciate the thought that goes into creating every one of these voices. That mm -hmm. it's, we try and take it really seriously, and that is one thing that I have prided myself on since having taken over directing the franchise eight years ago, is, is certainly making the Pokemon voices, I mean, you know, we are sort of standing on the shoulders of giants working off of what the Japanese people did, or sometimes off of what people from Four Kids did, and I worked for Four Kids for years, you know. Um, but sort of taking a different approach with this, but just letting you know that that's and and it's a, it's sort of a good lesson in acting when you're playing a character like that because you know stripped of your dialogue, you still have to learn to emote and and be fully expressive in every, anything and I, and. So it's an interesting exercise, and I'm really, I love playing those creatures, and hopefully I'll get to play a bunch more as time goes on. So there you go. Anybody, uh, it's almost 4 o'clock, and we're going to have to wrap it up. Anybody have any other questions for me? No. Nope. Wait, okay. you. Um, how many people do you go through, like, for each Pokemon? Like, how many people do you go through? What do you mean? Like, how many 
people voiced for the Pokemon. How many auditioned for yeah. it? How many auditioned? Oh, I don't know. Um, we don't audition for every single creature because that would take forever. But like when when uh, like when X Y started, you know, we auditioned for uh, for Fennekin, for Froki, for Chespin, you know, for the starters for the. Um, uh, for Bonnelby, because Bonnelby was sort of introduced as Clement's sidekick. Um, and, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I've got 10, 12 people I had read for them. <clears throat> you know, and, and they're always, you know, I generally will handpick the people who audition for any given role and then sort of listen to people thin the field a little and then send things to. The, the people at the Pokemon company, and then kind of have a dialogue with them. Uh, I sort of like these, and they'll see what they like, and then we come up with something. So, there you go. Yeah, you. Wait, yeah, you. you Gail, let me go first. You so much. Uh, my question was the Keldeon, the Pink Mignana. Keldeon. Uh, yes, Keldeon. The, uh, the My Little Pony Unicorn. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> like, I was wondering why you have him sound like a hero type. Like a very that's what he was. Because that's, that's well, hang on. no, he's not asking you guys. He's asking okay. like uh, why y'all had him sound like a like a deep hero voice when it was a colorful type of person. He is he he is a hero. He's just he and that's certainly at the end. Yeah. You know he becomes that and he seeks to be. He's got it in here. He just has to learn to not get in his own way. Um, it's a sort of coming of age boy becoming a man thing is what's going on. Yeah, you know. Exactly. Except for yeah, the the whole whole okay. Yeah. yeah, but but that's and that's why we went with that and also why we chose to we also we did audition uh, ladies uh, for that too because it is voiced by a woman in Japanese. But we figured better serve with a dude. I, I, I think it worked yeah, better. Yeah, because that was the voice in my head was a girlish yeah. voice. I it's I like it much better with a man, and the producers all agreed with me. So, and yeah, Vic ended up getting that part. Um, and he was, you know, he auditioned. When I do the movies, I will reach out to the national talent pool as much as I can, and have people from uh, we record in New York, but I'll have people from Texas or LA or whatever submit. Uh, and if they get the part and they want to come to New York and do it, and that time, you know, Vic, he made it to the finals, and with the Pokemon movies, the Japanese creators and producers make, had they get the final say, and they picked him, you know? And I, I'm glad that they did, he did a great job. So, another question, yeah. Not directly related to this, but I want, I'm wondering, um, in terms of the timing of when you get the scripts as opposed to Japan, is that mostly equal now as opposed to what it was back then? Because now I see that there's a lot less of a gap between the English and the Japanese. Uh, I don't know, like, in the past, if it was about when four kids got stuff or if they just chose to wait. I have a right. feeling they chose to, to wait. wait. Okay. Uh, whereas we get things as soon as we can and produce them immediately. Now, when they air... Completely not right, right. But I'm talking about I'm talking about when the raw scripts get written, in well, terms of that. We, you know, we're not going to get a script as soon as it's written. We're going to uh, get a script after it's been written and recorded in Japanese. Yes. I see the Japanese episodes before they ever air in Japan, by a matter of a few weeks, probably okay. maybe a month. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's it. And then and and again, that's all on Japan. They deliver at the pace they want to. If they decide that they're going to slow up. Then they slow up and okay. wait, you know? So that's it. Okay. Listen, you guys, you. I gotta go. Hey, everybody, look! It's Kyle Bear! A wild Kyle Bear has appeared. Throw your Pokeballs at him. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Don't, um, do it. Don't do it. Hi, Kyle. Hi. What's up, dude? I just got in from an uh, overnight flight. Boy, are your wings tired. No, wings are tired. All right. <laughs> um, well, Kyle, come on up here. Yay. And then I'll go Straight hide. On. Um, so Kyle, you got a panel in this room now? I do. Everybody sit here and listen to Kyle ha uh, Habert. A bear. Uh, a bear. A bear. A bear is coming to attack. Arr, yes. Arr, uh, arr. This dude has been working in uh, cartoons and video games for 63 years. Wow. I know. He doesn't look it, but I'm telling you. years. <laughs> Nobody's I had got a lot of work done in Beverly Hills surgery. Let's see. Let's see. Awesome. Famous writer Ron. I've seen you on the Facebook. Yeah. Well, of course you would go.